Hi, happy Sunday. It's Laurie and I'm here with you in my studio and today I'm going to paint an apple. I think it will take a long time so feel free to drop in and out. I'm not doing it live, I'm a bit uh, hesitant at this stage but I thought I'd walk you through the process that I have used and something that I've used to help me frame pictures so that I, I get my proportions right and so that it actually matches the odd little sizes of uh, wood and pieces of plywood etc that I often paint on in my big little picture series so join me or not I'm going to post it in fast forward later on our YouTube channel Rails End Gallery so check it out now or find me later on YouTube Rails End Gallery here we go so I've got a bit of a different setup today. I'm actually, uh, I have the camera right in front of my collarbone on a mic stand. I'm using two hair elastics to secure it. I think I've figured out enough about this to be able to do it with you. So what I have in front of me is a little panel. It's just a piece of wood, a piece of plywood. Very thin. I don't even know where I got it. But I primed it with uh, gesso and then I did put an undercoat of a bit of yellow, a little cadmium yellow warm, because I want some of that to shine through. I have been teaching myself acrylics, mostly on watercolor and caustic oil type, but I, I want to learn acrylics, acrylics. So I made a bit of a study of them and I love to do it myself. What you get is what I've learned, and we'll take it from there. I've selected a gorgeous apple. This is uh, an Empire apple from Foodland in Halliburton. I've got five more. I picked all different apples from Ontario that were in the grocery store. They were all $249 uh, pound, I think, not a kilogram. And they each had a little sticker on them. I took the sticker off. I want the apple naked. And then I made a stand. It's actually just two uh, painting cradles, but it could be two pieces of wood or anything. And uh, I've put a light. You can't see the light, but I'll just move the light down so you can. Okay, it's, it's a table light. What I'm trying to do is establish a single light source so that I can see the cast shadow of the apple and that little uh, white here, you know, that little reflection. That's really a reflection from my window and the sun seems to be coming in and out. So sometimes there is a bit of, of different shadow going on there. I wanted to compare the reds. So I uh, have a red panel because I was painting apples a lot before. And it's giving me some insight into what looks red and what doesn't look red. And I can kind of figure that out by holding it up sometimes, which is helpful. The panel that I have is, uh, I've decided I want to paint it vertical. So the panel I have is vertical. And I've made myself a viewfinder out of a piece of cardboard, which is the same proportions, although they're not the same size as my panel. So this gives you an idea of what we're trying to paint here. Oh, something like that. Maybe if I move it back, I get more in my picture. And if I move it forward, I get less. But it, it's a, it will help to remind me of the form that I'm painting, which is not quite spherical, but pretty close. So where to begin? My palette, um, I rescued uh, Hansa Yellow, the golden Hansa Yellow, because I could feel at the bottom that there was some liquid in there, but the top, I'd left the cap off. So I just rammed my paintbrush down it. And what I'm using is a meat tray. That's a tip from my friend Rose Pearson. Thanks to her, I collect every single meat tray 
that's ever come into this household. I got that. And here we've got a triart. Okay, it's a quincryodone. I think that's how you say it. It's a scarlet. Okay. That's a lovely color. I'm gonna put a little bit of a lot of that on. Probably won't use all of this, but with me, I often paint the same subject more than once. So there's a little cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is great for shadows. It's great for a mixing color too. And then I'm going to use some burnt umber just to sketch it in. Everybody see that? And I've propped my, my little uh, canvas up. Not because I always paint on a propped up canvas, but because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Don't mind me if I don't talk. I like a bowl of water. And a rag. It's a nice clean rag. It's an old tablecloth that I cut up. So I just, I usually keep the rag on my lap or just beside where I'm working. So, panel. Just water. I've found that uh, sometimes I do take a while, so I've started sometimes putting a little artist medium down first. It slows down the drying time of things. I've had this tube for ages. Some people mix it in with their water because I'm going to be using a fair bit of water at the beginning. I've, I found this works. Helps to everything glide a little easier. That up so you can see it there. Better? Yes. Pull a little red in, a little blue, a little umber. See how I still have a lot of slide going on there? I like that.
I know this shadow seems a bit dark, but don't worry, we'll lighten it up a bit later. actually hard to do this with it holding it in one hand but we'll see I didn't think it would be that hard I like that little yellow bit up there. I'll bring that out later, I hope. So now it can stay like that. So what am I gonna do with the background? It's really, it's a, it's a bit of a soft edge in there in the background. And then you can see how much, very much darker this is. And I point with my brush on the object there. See how dark that looks? So I'm going to put a bit of dark right in there right now. And I think I'll use a bit of blue in there. It'll make it, to sort of knock it back. There's a little bruise right here. That's not my perfect app, so I I'm not going to put that in. See, how there's a nice reflection going on right here. I'm pointing with my brush. That's, it's great if you can capture that reflected light. It really helps add some form to the object. And here, of course, we've got some lines that they they help to describe the the shape, so I might add them later. It's hard to say. Anyway, we've got the basic thing going here. Now I want to work in some background, and I'm going to use a bigger brush. Slightly bigger brush. Help me go fast. Oops. The background's still a bit mushy, which is nice. Um, I think I'm going to have to put some white, get, get a hold of some white. I'll get that. This is a titanium white. Don't worry the the apple is looking a bit sickly right now. It's not rotten. <laughs> if you want to see how your color is going to look in a thing like this, you can actually hold it up. You would see that that's not quite dark enough. I'm not looking for high realism in any case. 
what I'm looking for is just to kind of mush on something that'll give us some form. So I'm going to bring my unit back up. You see that the apple is sitting on, say, a table that is in the uh, intersection between the table and the background is not quite at the halfway mark. So that's where I'm going to put mine. Put a little bit more of my medium in there. I mean, an apple's a good thing to paint, I guess. Reminds you that we only, we see what we know, really. This is not the exact apple, and that's partly why I sent this project to myself last year when COVID started. Well, I didn't send it to myself, I assigned it to myself. But I've had a lot of fun painting apples. Red and green are um, opposites in the color wheel, so just playing off of that a little by putting this, making this background slightly green. See if I can make the make my apple pop out a bit more from the background than it has, than it is. I think I kind of missed something there. I, um, I've got the where the stem comes out being in kind of the wrong spot, so I'm using my paint to cover it over. Now, what am I gonna do with the front? More white. I can take a bit of license with the front. Make it really white. You see, something that I just noticed is that this apple could be filling the frame quite a bit more than she is. So I don't know what do you think I should do about that? Paint it again? Filthy brush. I don't want a filthy brush.
As you can see, I decided to go big, bigger. So it's just a little correction, but it's uh, I think it's worth the time to make the correction right now before it goes totally south. I've done something on my palette when I was mixing the white, which is not a good idea to do. I got. I got too much weight in my yellow and I don't want to have that weight in there in my picture. So I'm just pulling it out, pulling the yellow out from there. I'll pink that up in a minute. The ground is starting to dry. We're 20 minutes in. I mean, not the ground. Well, the, uh, the medium that I put in there. 20 minutes in. Should be getting ready to stop soon. I hope you're doing okay with yours, if you're doing one alongside me. The main thing is just have, have a good time. Send me what you do. Did you see what happened there? I, I added too much. So it's still pretty wet. So I can, I can actually draw it off, take it off if I want. Which I'm going to do. And what it gives me is a nice soft edge. I think I'm really doing her justice this apple. But I'm having fun. Switching to a smaller brush. the burnt umber and blue.
I'm actually pretty, uh, I'm okay with that. So. I thought this would be a half hour thing. Maybe we're looking at a little longer than that. 27 minutes. <laughs> Painting with a timer is perhaps not your best. But, but you know, if you think about it, sitting down to journal for 20 minutes a day is not unlike what we just did. Right now, I'm just using up my palette. Don't worry, folks who are worried about the shadow, it's coming back. Now what's missing? Shadow, proper shadow. And highlight. So this is this pretty diffuse shadow around the edges. You notice that? My shadow's always a bit, it's very, it's much darker in close to your object and it it really is like um, this brush is loose I'm going to draw it with the other end of the brush that's pretty where we're pretty much where I want to go with it right in there so I'm going to use a bit of blue Try a second. My apple's a bit shorter and fatter than the one in the picture. But I'm not going to change it now. But there is something that's really going to see that right there. I should just knock that in there. The question is, is it pink? Or is it red? I think it 
it's a bit pink. Or a bit peachy. And I'm only going to take one, one chance at this, so wish me luck. <laughs> Nobody else knows that's a window. Do they need to know? Not really. Okay. I went too pink, didn't I? I'm making some purple and putting it in here. This is when the fun comes. Later on, no one's going to compare your apple to, to your picture. They don't have the apple. Only you have the apple in your head. See, that's dry enough down there now that I can actually do something with it. We're at 35 minutes now.
I don't know. I'm not entirely pleased with how this is working out over here. And I'm not quite sure how to fix it. I think that I can go in. Maybe I will look at it. Maybe it's time to look at it through the viewfinder again. See what I'm doing. Well, okay, pretty obvious. Overall, is too dark. The whole thing is too dark. What to do? What to do? The whole thing is too dark. Hmm. Silly, silly. It was going so well. Not so bad from a distance. Putting the, the greenish uh, background is probably a mistake. What do you think? Well, this is the time to do it, so I'm going to lighten up that background. kind of scumbling on a layer and then I'm going to leave it to be looking at it that closely to do what I'm about to do, so. See what I did there by mistake? Better, slightly better. And we're not looking for an exact likeness in any case. But in that this is the light side, I'm just very roughly um, tipping in a little light. Once I get rid of the finger marks.
I just noticed those little dots, so I thought hmm, that would be fun to get them in there. Now, what if I don't like them? I'm not sure if I like them. Let's see what I can do. Yes, I just licked my brush. You never like to put water on after. But I kind of think this makes it look real and reminds us of those dots. So you need to be softened. Moment of truth. Can. I was like, oh, overwork. Oh, well, not the end of the world. It's one of those things, you add more or you add less or you leave it. I'm going to leave it. Well, thank you for joining me today. I may uh, I might go in with a little colored pencil after. But I think, I think we're pretty well done. There we go. Different angle. Of course, I'm higher up when I'm looking. And I think what I'll do now is give you my eye view so that you see what I saw exactly. And you be the judge. Thank you for joining me today. I've had fun. Hope you had fun. See what we can do with the next variety. Perhaps a Cortland next. This is Lori from Rails End Gallery. Um, I would love it if other artists wanted to do some demos. So give me a call, info at railsendgallery.com, or you can phone me at 457-2330, area code 705. Over and out. Have a great weekend.